Stated simply, an array is really nothing more than a sequence of elements. If we ever need to work with an entire set of elements, whether it be individual class types that we've created for, of our own design or maybe other simple data types such as integers or longs, then we can create a set of these elements by using an array structure. Now one important thing about the array structure is that every single element is always going to be of the same basic data type. So if I wanted to create an array of integers, for example, every single element in that array would have to be typed as an integer. I can also create arrays of, of other types of uh, data types as well, including class types, interface types, etc. Now elements are basically accessed using what's called an index value or an indexer. And that indicates the individual element's position within the array. So if I had an array of 10 elements, then I could access each of these individual elements by using their unique index number. All of those arrays basically derive from the basic class system.array. And every single array is always going to be base 0 in C sharp. That means that if I have an array of 10 elements, let's say 10 integers, I would access those 10 elements by using element 0 first, then element 1, element 2, etc., through element 9. Now, an array can consist of one or more dimensions. A dimension, just think of that as a, a plane, if you will, within the array structure. So if I had a one-dimensional array, that's simply a list of values, for example. A two-dimensional array, think of it like a table. I've got a column and a row-based plane that I could use to find the intersection points of each of those individual dimensions. I can have two, three, four dimensions, however many I need, to track the specific number of elements that are contained within the array itself. Similar to standard variables of data types, when you create an instance of an array, we have to start with a declaration statement to declare the variable that will be used to reference that array. Now the declaration statement for the array looks pretty much like a standard variable declaration with one exception. You'll notice that there are open and closed square bracket characters after the name of the data type. Now if I wanted to create a, a, just a basic variable, for example, of an integer data type, I would just use the data type identifier int followed by the name of the variable, in this case my array. By throwing in the open and closed square bracket characters, I'm identifying that my array is not a single integer value, but rather will be used to reference an array of integers. Now, unlike other programming languages such as C, C++, or Java, you don't have quite the flexibility in C Sharp. In C Sharp, you are required to place that open and closed square bracket character after the name of the data type or the data type identifier. In other languages, Java for example, you can put the square bracket characters after the name of the variable itself. That's not allowed in C Sharp. In addition, when we actually do create the instance of the array, we'll also have to indicate the size of the array in bracketed characters in the constructor of that array statement. Now, to actually create the instance of the array, the next step is to call the array constructor. Remember that since an array is technically an object, it's an object based on that system.array base class, we're going to be using the new keyword to create our instance of that array. So assuming that we're actually creating the instance at the point at which the variable is defined, we might use a statement like this example, with the int open and close square bracket, my array equals, then that new keyword, which we're using to create the new instance of the array, and then, again, the data type identifier, and in square brackets, the number of elements that we will find in that array. So this first statement would create an array of 10 integers. Those integer elements would be integer element my array sub 0, sub 1, sub 2, etc., all the way up to my array sub 9. Now, if we were to declare the statement in advance, such as saying string my string array, for example, we've already declared the variable, then we simply have to assign the value of that new array to the variable that's been declared. So in the second example, we're actually dividing this into two statements. First of all, we declare the variable as an array of strings. Then in the second statement, we call the constructor and indicate the total number of string elements that are going to be found in that array. Once again, we have an array of 10 elements numbered 0 through 9. 
Now you can also implicitly size that array by providing the values for that array at the point which the array is declared. In this first example, I have a string array called beetles. You'll notice that in the curly braces, I've indicated the values that I want to be stored within the array. So what is the size of this array? Well, there's going to be four elements in this array, numbered from zero to three. You'll notice that nowhere did I actually use the new keyword, nor did I specifically say that there were going to be four elements. However, because we place the values, assign those values, the element becomes implicitly sized. So Beatles is an array of four string elements. If you want to use the constructor and still assign default values or original values, you can by using the code like in the second example. We have a string array called Stooges, which equals a new string with three elements, and then provide the values for those elements, in this case, Mo, Larry, and Curly, after the instantiation of that array. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive list of all the methods and properties that are available for, for arrays, but this will give you a basic idea of the types of things that arrays support. Some of the more common methods include methods such as clear, if you wanted to clear out the contents of the array and recapture the array, the array space and memory. Copy, if you wanted to create a copy of the array and place that into another array. Or sort, if you wanted to sort the elements in the array. Now one note about the sort method, the sort is either only available for one-dimensional arrays or the first dimension of a multi-dimensional array. So you be aware that there's some limitations with the sort method. We also have some methods that we can use to return values to us about the array. Get length, for example, will tell us the total number of elements in the array. Or get upper bound and get lower bound will tell us something about the index numbers that are on the top or bottom of that set of array elements. We also have properties associated with the arrays as well. Fairly common properties include things such as is fixed size, which is generally the case for arrays. Arrays are not dynamic in nature. They're not resizable automatically. Uh, we kind of have to do a few little workarounds in order to get resizable or dynamic arrays. Is read only. There are some times when you may want a read only array where those values are not going to be editable. There's some cases when arrays based on certain types of elements are going to be read only by default. So we can actually query these by using the Boolean is fix size or is read only. We also have an is synchronized method indicating whether or not that particular array is actually thread safe. We'll talk about threads a little bit later in this course. But the concept of synchronization is allowing an object which may be shared by multiple threads to be accessible um, by using object locks to prevent multiple threads from accessing the same elements at the same time. We also have a property called length, which just indicates the total number of elements in that array, as well as one called rank, which indicates the number of dimensions that are found within that particular array. Now, one of the common implementations that we're going to see for, array, for an array, in the con at least in the case of a console application, is the use of that main method. Maybe you recall seeing this before, but this is the basic signature of the main method that we'll see in basically any application. And if we wanted to pass elements to that main method, you do so by using an array. Take a look at the signature again. Static void main, and then in parentheses, one of your options is a string array of arguments. So when you're running console-based applications, that's when it's most common, um, then from the command line, you can actually pass in a comma-separated argument list. So you can feed values in at the command line. Now, technically, other types of applications, not necessarily just console-based applications, maybe a Windows application, could use the same basic concept if you wish. But it is more common using console-based applications. Do be aware, however, that unlike C and C++, the name of the program is not the zero element in that argument's array. So that means that the zero element in the arguments array would actually be the first actual argument that you passed in. So the name of the program is not actually provided as an argument. 